This is the uh, HF single sideband military technical radio, the GRC215. Uh, what you're seeing here is the receiver exciter, which is the uh, RT1512G, and there is the uh, pre post selector, which is the I hope you can read it. The TN612G. This is uh, basically a receiver exciter. Covers uh, 2 to 30 megahertz in 10 hertz steps. As a direct digital synthesizer. Uh, this uh, basically is microprocessor controlled by the uh, controller. So the uh, pre post selector. Will follow the uh, will follow the uh, receiver exciter when you change frequency, and it maintains a pass band of about 50 kilohertz, probably less, depending on the frequency. On the lower bands, it's narrower than on the higher bands, obviously. But the performance of this uh, pre-post selector is just phenomenal. It is a uh, nine-pole uh, uh, filter. Motor, motorized filter microprocessor control. I have another video on YouTube where you can actually see the performance of this filter. I recommend you to have a look at that. Um, I have uh, currently the radio at the Maritime Mobile Service Net at the 20 meter band, 14.300 uh, 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 megahertz. Uh, the radio has, uh, I think it's 32 uh, 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 memories, and I programmed two, this channel and another one, I will recall that for you. This is memory number one. You can hear the uh, pre-post selector retuning. We're now at 14.2, which is what I have in memory 1. Memory 2 is the uh, Maritime Mobile Service Band. At uh, 14.3. Now it's also possible to operate the radio without the pre-post selector. Now I have it turned off. Now only the receiver exciter is active. So what I would do is basically connect the antenna straight into the receiver exciter. And the nice thing is when you do that, when you change the channel, it will go much faster because the uh, the motors don't have to follow. Now the receiver exciter is still an incredibly good receiver, uh, so you can operate it without the pre-post selector. Pre-post selector was really used for situations where there were multiple of these stations uh, operating in near vicinity on the battlefield, uh, in close frequency and uh, distance separation. So the uh, filter would assure that if one, for instance, was transmitting at this frequency, and another station was transmitting maybe one megahertz lower, 
that they could operate at full power, 500 watts, without any mutual interference. That's where this filter really is necessary. So this filter is uh, considerably better than anything on the ham market. If you really want to uh, have a very narrow uh, uh, RF filter that covers the whole uh, shortwave band, this is really the one you, uh, you want to use. We have some kind of pile up going on on this frequency. I will uh, demonstrate to you the uh, transmitter. Right now I have it hooked up to a uh, standard military speaker through the uh, connector here. Australia coming through. So right now we're at the speaker. Uh, if I want to uh, transmit, obviously I need a uh, handset, and we're uh, going to hook that up and demonstrate to you the transmitter. All right, we have it on uh, the handset now. I'll uh, demonstrate you the transmitter quickly. Uh, in order to do that, we'll go to a clear frequency that I have in the memory 14.176 we have a uh, M radio at that same channel and uh, we'll demonstrate to you the uh, transmitter now the radio is capable of upper sideband and lower sideband right now we're in uh, upper sideband 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, testing As you see, that works well. Let's go to the uh, lower sideband, second sideband, lower sideband. We are on the lower sideband there as well. One, two, three, four, five, testing. One, two, three, four, five. That uh, works as well. Now, this was a test with only the receiver exciter straight into the uh, antenna. Uh, like I said, the output of the uh, out, uh, receiver exciter is about 100 milliwatts. The pre-post selector also has an amplifier that brings it to about 1 watts, which would then drive a uh, power amplifier, which I don't have. But um, I'll demonstrate you the, uh, the power that we get with the uh, pre-post selector. All right, right now we have it uh, connected uh, to the uh, pre-post selector so basically this is the output of the receiver exciter that then goes into here the input for the pre-post selector and the output is split there is a transmit and a receiver output so there is a relay in there which would uh, make it easier for you to uh, hook up an amplifier so you would go straight in an amplifier from the transmitter and then the output would be combined in another relay that's basically how this would work we are still at 176. We are still monitoring here. One, two, three, four, five. Now, as you can see, it's about uh, one watt. I have the meter in the most sensitive position, which is uh, from experience, I know we're talking about a watt. So that is basically the drive power you would have available for a linear amplifier. Alright, I'll uh, show you the uh, insides of the radio. I already unscrewed it. It's, it's built extremely professional. As you can see, uh, everything is uh, in uh, die cast aluminum modules that are plugged into a mainframe. Uh, this is the power supply, it runs off 115 volts AC. 
Uh, this is the reference oscillator, the audio exciter, RF exciter, an RF switch. This is a receiver board, IF board, and the audio receiver. The receiver and transmitter path are completely separated, so the transmitter has its own mechanical filter. The receiver uh, has two cascaded Collins filters, and the transmitter has one filter. Um, this is the uh, synthesizer, it's a direct digital synthesizer. Uh, what was pretty unique in the 80s. This radio was designed uh, in the mid 80s and um, that's what we have here. The radio was uh, capable of fast frequency hopping that's the reason why a DDS is used because uh, a regular synthesizer would not be fast enough. This is where the uh, controller unit slides in. It is a uh, C11670 slash G. This control unit is uh, also used for other transceivers, so it's kind of a universal unit. Um, there is a possibility for a, a TSAC unit, secure unit, a KGV-10, however that has been removed from this radio, so uh, for the frequency hopping mode this would be necessary, but that has been removed before the radio was uh, sold to the public. These radios were uh, destined to be rolled out in Europe for the Regency net. That never happened because the Cold War ended before that could happen. So these radios never have seen active service. They're brand new. They've never been used. And this is probably one of the most professional HF radios I've ever seen. It's, it's a technical military radio. Uh, many radios that you see, military radios on the market, are in supporting roles. That was not the case for this one. This was a uh, tactical military radio to be used uh, after a nuclear attack, if all else had failed. Else had failed. This radio is uh, EMP capable, EMP, EMP robust, I should say. It uh, can handle the electromagnetic pulse effect from a nuclear explosion. That's what it was designed for. The GRC215, the receiver exciter and the pre post selector. Military technical radio. Thank you for watching this video.